So, you've been using Blender for a bit, and you've heard that you can make it do some awesome stuff with Python. Cause, yeah, using Blender scripts can be super powerful. It can save you time on tedious tasks, it can help you automate your workflow, allow you to design your very own tools, or even discover some next-level creation techniques like procedural generation. So whatever the reason you're here, welcome to the world of Blender scripting. Oh, and if you've never coded in Python before, no worries, this programming language is actually pretty beginner-friendly and will be starting from the ground up. Okay, first up, let's open up Blender and set up our Blender scripting workspace. By the way, here I'm using Blender 4.2, which is the latest stable release at the time of making this video, and doing Blender Python API scripting is really dependent on the version, as we'll discuss later on, so be sure that you're using a compatible version. But anyway, so if you look around the default layout, you might not see any Python scripting tools just yet. But they're actually closer than you think. If you go to the list of built-in layouts at the top, and you click on that ready-made interface layout on the far right, then you'll instantly switch to the scripting layout. That's a whole new arrangement of the workspace, with everything we need to cut up our very first Blender Python script. More precisely, you see that we have a text editor in the middle, where we'll write our code, we have a 3D viewport on the left at the top, then below it we have a Python console, which is a bit like a direct line to Blender's brain, where we'll be able to type in our commands to test them and have Blender directly execute those actions. And finally, in the bottom left corner, we have a log of the recent events. So for now it's empty, but eventually, that's where we'll see what Blender is doing. Of course, all those panels have a lot more to them, and there are other tools that you can use to script in Blender. But for now, let's just go with the flow and jump in. It's time to do a bit of Blender Scripting 101. Okay, for this very first script, let's have Blender do something real simple. Click on the New button in the text editor to create a fresh script file, and we'll start with the magic phrase of programming, print hello Blender. This print method is the Python built-in to display text in the console, and we pass it the message to output as a string which you can define with double or single quotes, both work the same. Then simply hit the Run Script button, which is over here with a little play triangle icon. Okay, well, we got a debug saying our script ran, but nothing really happened. So what's the matter here? Why don't we see our print in the console? In fact, when we run scripts, Blender outputs the result of the script execution to the system console, and not its own console panel. On Windows, you can access this system console very easily from the window menu with this toggle system console option. On Mac, you'll need to actually run your Blender editor from the command line to then get your output in this terminal. But in any case, if you check out your system console, then you'll see that Blender indeed just said hello Blender right back at you. And it does so again and again every time you re-execute the script from the interface. So congrats, you've officially run your very first bit of code in Blender. Okay, now this is cool, but it's just some plain Python action. We didn't actually do any Blender stuff. So let's do something that truly interacts with and impacts our 3D scene. As you probably know, a Blender scene is made of data and objects. And all those meshes, those actions, materials, rigs, etc. each have a unique reference in the scene that is their name. You can't have two things with the same name in the same file. So as soon as you duplicate one, for example, Blender will auto-add some suffix to distinguish from the original. And the nice thing is that this name allows us to directly get a reference to those objects or data resources in our Blender scripts, and so we can then tell the software what to do with them. Typically, let's say that we want to move this default cube around. Instead of grabbing it and moving it with the mouse, we can tell Blender to do it via code. So to do this, we're gonna remove everything we had in our script and replace it with the following lines. Then simply hit the Run Script button again. What happened? Well, you just moved the cube two units to the right on the x-axis. Okay, now how does that work in code? Well, here's what's going on. First of all, BPY is Blender's Python library. It's the toolbox full of commands that we need to use to script our way around Blender. 
So at the top, we use the import Python keyword to make this library so its contents and all its submodules accessible to our Blender script. And then this part, bpy.data.objectsCube, tells Blender that we want to interact with the object named cube in our scene. More specifically, we first access the data submodule inside the bpy library, then we access the dictionary of objects inside it, which contains a reference to every object currently in our Blender scene file, and finally we use the unique name of the object that we want to interact with as the key. So this piece of code uses the bpy library to dive into the contents of our scene and extract back a reference to this cube object. Finally, the .location.x gets the x component of the 3D location of this cube object, and the plus equals 2 operation tells Blender to increment this value by 2, so to add 2 to the current cube's position along the x-axis. Of course, that's a pretty basic operation, but you already start to see the power of scripting. Imagine doing this for a bunch of objects at once, or repeating this operation a hundred times. With code, you can tweak, move, rename, animate, export, and do a bunch of stuff on tons of objects at once, without having to click everywhere like crazy and spend hours. Now, before we wrap all this up, here are a few extra things to remember about Python scripting in Blender. First of all, as I said before, the Blender Python API tends to change a lot in between Blender versions. There's been some big milestones and breaking changes, like with Blender 2.8. So always be sure to check what version creators are using when you look at their tutorials. Again here, I'm using Blender 4.2. Second, for now, this Python script that we made is temporary. It will get erased if we close our Blender scene. So to actually keep your work, don't forget to save your file to the disk. Third, depending on how you code your scripts, they can actually be reused between scenes, and that's kind of the whole point. The idea is that they interact with the objects at their disposal, in a pretty agnostic way. Which means that if your scenes contain objects with the same names, or if you write your code without direct name references, then you'll be able to do the same actions on whichever scene you're currently working in, just by reloading your script and running it in the proper context. And finally, here's a little pro tip. If you ever get stuck or want to see the Python code for something you just did manually, like modifying the transform of an object, then look at the info panel with the logs in the bottom left corner of the scripting layout. Blender will log almost every action you take as code here. You can copy it straight out, paste it in your script editor, and then experiment with it. Though you might want to simplify some operations, for example by taking out the options with default values. But in any case, that's it! You're now a Blender Python programmer and you're ready to dive into the API to learn more about all the amazing features of this scripting-based workflow. As always, don't forget to like the video if it was helpful, hit the subscribe button for even more content, and leave a comment with any questions or ideas for Blender scripting tricks that you'd like to learn. And on that note, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.